So over the years, I've bought quite a few fake football shirts. Some of them good, some of them not so good. But more recently, I've been having a pleasant experience with DH Gate. Last week, I did a review on this beauty, the 93 to 94 Man United away shirt. I've also done a review on the current 23 24 Man United third shirt. So I went on a DH Gate rampage, ordering loads more shirts, and these three arrived in the post yesterday. I have ordered more, so hit that like button if you'd like to see me review more fake football shirts off DH Gate. Anyway, let's review these three. So guys, which are we gonna do first? We've got the R9 Classic Barcelona 96-97 away with Ronaldo 9 on the back, of course. We've got the current, hey Jude, Jude Bellingham 23-24 Real Madrid away. We've also got PSG, before they were the PSG we know of today. This is a 2002-2003 shirt. You can't see it, but it does have Ronaldinho on the back. Some great choices right here. Let's just go straight in with it with R9. Let's do this. Ooh. So obviously if you can hear grunting, it's them, not me. So guys, I thought I'd come outside. Seems to be the best lighting for this shirt. Obviously when you buy these fake football shirts, it's not just exclusive to DH Gate, but lots of, there is lots of sites out there. I'm not endorsing them by the way as well. Obviously if you're supporting a club, when you buy a shirt, you're supporting the club financially. A little bit different in our case as a Man United fan. We won't play sports, we won't play sports. But obviously these, I keep saying obviously, apologies. Obviously, these shirts come at a lot cheaper price. And it's hard to get the authentic, old school retro types like this one right here. If I was to buy this exact Ronaldo top with printing and everything, I'd probably be looking at at least 300 great British pounds. So for us that just want something to knock about in, aren't worried about kind of spending so much money for an investment. Oh my days, here we go. Look at that. I bought this as a 2XL size as well. We've got this in 2XL. So what we always say when you buy fake football shirts is to always go a size up. But I find that if you want that 90s fit, that baggy retro fit, for those I tend to go two sizes up. For example, this Man United one, again, check out that review. We did that last week. This is two sizes up. This is 2XL. And so is the Ronaldo R9 top. Just look at that beautiful shirt. It feels really nice as well. It doesn't feel cheap and nasty. You know when you buy a lot of fake football shirts, especially overseas as a kid, you tend to get that nasty feel. Now, ironically, I've actually got a really bad fake Barca shirt that I think was the home shirt to this shirt. So I'll show that afterwards as an example to see how far fake football shirts have come since the mid nineties when we went on holiday and bought fake football shirts on holiday. In terms of the printing, let's get a close-up of that. Really clean printing. This feels, it's obviously added on to the shirt, but it doesn't feel quite as bobbly, so I'm not quite as concerned when I put this in the washing machine that it's going to flake off. Like, I'm a little bit concerned about the sharp view, view cam on this shirt right here. I tend to recommend, and again, you guys have recommended in my previous videos, to either hand wash or wash them on a low temperature, but also to turn them inside out when you've got printing so that the printing doesn't get damaged. Because if anything's gonna get damaged on a fake football shirt, it's gonna be the printing more likely. The stitching, everything like that is gonna stay pretty good. You tend to be all right. But as I mentioned, it came in the Kappa bag. Not that that's kind of an important thing, but it's nice, it's a nice little throwback. We tend to like 90s nostalgia on the channel, throwback items to when we were a kid. So when you've got the Kappa branded tag, as we've got right there, just to show you it is 2XL, it kind of gives you that feeling of getting a football shirt when you were a kid back in the mid 90s, or whenever you were a kid. We've got a Ronaldinho 02 one over there, so we're covering all bases today. You've got the Kappa detailing down the sleeve, you see that there, that's within the fabric. I loved the cuffed sleeves. Again, it seems to be a trademark of Knight's football shirts. The collar is similar to this one. It's like you've got a collar, but it's quite a small collar. It's not one of those really big ones you tended to have in the early 90s. The kappa is stitched on here as well. Same with the Barca badge. And you've got all those 
Barca details within the shirt. I'm actually going to go and get that fake football shirt because it looks a very much nasty copy of this and you can see again how far fake football shirts have come since the mid 90s. So I might, I might have got my timelines off. Was this the 96, 97 home Barca shirt? But who remembers buying a shirt like this when they were a kid? Obviously Figo on the back, he controversially went to Real. But if you look again, I don't know if this was like a remake by Barca. I'm pretty sure it was just a fake one off a dodgy guy in a market stall. But the, the woven on badge there, just look at that one on the horrible fake and compare that with that badge. You can really see the quality difference. Again, I know I've had this since like 96 or whatever it was, so they're not gonna be the same, are they? But again, the printing, just take a look at a, a nasty fake printing and have a look at this beautiful printing right there. Chalk and cheese, baby, chalk and cheese. So I think it's only right now I get this shirt on. Oh, wow, look at that fit. Fits beautifully. Again, if you want a more tapered fit, if you've got a better physique than me, you've got nice big arms and you want a nice tight fit, only go one size up. I wouldn't recommend doing it the normal size unless you really are hench and have an awesome physique. For me, two sizes up is perfect. Nice and baggy. I'm wearing them exactly as, who else wore this shirt? Did Pep, was Pep still around, Pep Guardiola? Obviously R9 would wear like a baggy-ish fit like this. A little bit slimmer back in the day R9, but I'm really impressed by this. I like the fact that I'm not gonna worry about a printed on sponsor. As I mentioned, let's just have a look at the back. By the way, disclaimer guys, if you're wondering why my hair is extra crap today, it's always crap, but it's because I tried cutting it myself. Never do that. I thought I'm gonna save money from haircuts and little things like that so I can buy more bloody football shirts. Probably not the wisest decision I've ever made. Anyway, let's move on to the Jude Bellingham 23-24 Real Madrid shirt. Here we go. Hey Jude. Now this is gonna be good because this is gonna fit slightly differently as to the more retro 90s style shirt. This is obviously made by Adidas. And I'm, I've really liked the look of this shirt. When I watched Jude in the Champions League and stuff, I thought, you know what? I'm supporting my fellow Englishman, probably the best English player in the world right now, or the most on form. So let's uh, crack it open. We've got their attempt at an official Adidas bag. Again, nice touch. They do everything they can to make it as authentic as buying a legitimate football shirt. Again, we're doing this for research. I'm not endorsing buying a fake shirt. Oh my God, I've completely forgot that I bought this with the FIFA World Champions logo on there. This feels really nice. This feels exactly how an authentic football shirt should feel. You've got the, this is, oh, by the way, this is an authentic one, not a fan version one. Again, authentic. This is heat pressed, the logo. Obviously on the fan one, it's embroidered, stitched on. Nice heat pressed. We went for that option with the Man United third shirt. And again, we are really impressed. And this is by the exact same seller. I think his name's like Mao Mao Jin or something like that. So again, but when you find your seller on DHgate and you've had good experiences with them, I'd highly recommend sticking to them because there are some dodgy sellers out there on DHgate. They're not all good, which is why we make review videos like this. In terms of the Emirates, again, this has the exact same feel to the Man United third shirt. It's going to, isn't it? Because it's by Adidas. It's got the same heat press feel there. If you watched that Man United third shirt review I did a few weeks back, and you're impressed by the review or by the shirt. Again, this is very much like for like. You've got the Adidas free stripes along here. For me, these, the home away in the third shirt, Real Madrid have released or Adidas have released on behalf of Real Madrid this season are probably the best free kits they've had for years. You always get one or two that's good and then an odd iffy one. Absolutely love these. You've got the Bellingham name set. You've got the Real logo at the bottom. Real badge, should I say, I hate saying logo instead of badge. And you might have noticed this as well. Not only have you got the Champions League logo, you've got 14, because ladies and gents, what does that represent? We know what it represents. Let me know in the comments below. You've got the UEFA Foundation logo on there. Really, really nice. That's kind of like slightly foamy as it should be. You've got the Adidas tag there. 
feels a little bit different, the tags do, than the authentic one. We did a comparison on, again, that Man United third shirt review. We compared a legitimate tag with a fake tag. And I don't know if you can see that there, but you've got the 2XL sizing as well. So I think it's only right now that I get the R9 top off and we move on to the modern day and I get on Jude's shirt right here. Voila. So this is my case in point exactly. Look how much tighter this feels compared to the R9 one. Both 2XL, it just depend well, what you buy. So when you're looking to buy a fake football shirt, bear in mind that this is a player version, authentic version, albeit fake. So authentic player versions tend to fit tighter anyway, like that Man United third one did. Again, this is 2XL. I know I'm not in the best shape at the moment. I've been eating a lot of crap. I've been going to games, eating pies. But look how much tighter this is compared to the R9 one. Again, the fit was a lot different back in the 90s. So bear that in mind when you order. Don't just think, oh, I'm a large, so I'm gonna be a large. Think how you want the shirt to fit. To fit, fit. There's nothing wrong with this fitting tight. Maybe I need to get in that gym a little bit more. There's nothing wrong with it because this is how a modern shirt should fit. If this was really baggy and that R9 one was a little bit tight, it would look a bit weird. I've bought fakes before and they've been really tight and it just looks weird. Man United grey one being tight looks weird. This doesn't look as weird as it could. So if you can see on the back, you've got Real Madrid written on the back. You've got a heat ready logo there. Everything as it should be. This is exactly like the shirt you would buy in a shop, in JD Sports, on the official Real Madrid website, wherever you're gonna buy your shirts. Again, not endorsing them, merely saying that if you want a cheaper option, this one right here is probably the way to go. What I'm gonna do as well, guys, at the end of the video, I'm gonna do a close-up of some of the shirts, but I'm also gonna let you know how much I paid for each shirt, and again, remind you of the seller, and how long it took. Well, I may as well tell you that now. It took about three weeks for these shirts to come. The others I've mentioned that I might do in another video if you hit that like button. The others due to arrive anytime now. So last but not least, let's go and check out that PSG 2002 Ronaldinho top. Ah, voila. So, lovely Thompson logo. They're no longer called Thompson. Again, another throwback, nostalgia. They're now called Tui, I think. This was made by Nike. You can tell you got the swoosh, Nike, Nike, however you pronounce it. If you're American, it's probably Nike. Probably should be said as Nike. Us Brits tend to say Nike. In an official Nike bag. Oh my days. Now, I'll tell you why I bought this shirt in a moment. Not only because it's a gorgeous shirt, and ironically, PSG have kind of done a bit of a throwback to this shirt with their current shirt. They've gone for that red stripe through the badge. And for me, this is one of the nicest shirts PSG have ever had. I don't like the gradients people do or companies do on modern shirts. This is a straight to the point, good old fashioned stripe with a white trim down it. The old school Nike swoosh. This one here I will be a little bit concerned by because again, a lot of older shirts tend to have the bobbly printing. They seem to have phased that out over the years, probably because of all the, the concerned mums. Every time you put your shirt in the wash as a kid, your mum would just crap her pants because she knew once that shirt came out of the washing machine, the sponsor, the printing was going to be fucked. Ronaldinho. So a lot of you might, might have forgotten that Dinho played for PSG before he went to Barcelona. Now, I was watching like old, really sad, I was watching like old like FIFA 06 clips or like used to have like highlight montages when you played FIFA back in the day and they had highlights of a, an awesome Ronaldinho goal that he scored when he played for PSG in this very shirt. And I thought, do you know what? Ronaldinho, back in my teens, was one of my favorite players. I even called myself Ryan Aldinho. How sad was I? But I wore the number 10, like Ronaldinho. And for that reason, for me, this is a massive throwback. As much as I love the 90s, the early 2000s, mid 2000s were class as well. And Ronaldinho just brought us so many cool moments. If you look at that PSG badge, beautifully sewn on. Again, they've tweaked the badge a little bit since then. Let's do a close-up of the Nike. Let's do a close-up of the Thompson. And a close-up of the main man himself, Mr. Dino, Ronald Dino 10. You've got LFP, would that be League Un logo? You've got this lovely trim down the bottom as well. Nike did this as their template. I think Arsenal had it during their invincible season. 2XL. 
the shirts tended to become a little bit more fitted in the noughties compared to the 90s but again people still wore their shirts baggy so i think it's only right now guys i get dude off and i get mr ronaldinho on let's do a bit of a try on of this shirt Ooh. and there we go voila so this fits really nice again it's a slightly relaxed baggier fit by design that's why i chose 2xl really love the sleeves again they're not quite as cuffed as the r9 one but you've got a nice trim and i love sleeves especially now that i'm not as kind of not that i was ever too hench but I obviously used to go to the gym i like my fitness and i'd pump those guns and i used to like nice tight fitting sleeves whereas now i've got older i prefer the sleeves to be a little bit longer a little bit more relaxed and i love that aspect of this shirt let me just spin round Ronaldinho 10. So again, thoroughly impressed with this shirt guys. I hope you've enjoyed these DH Gate football shirt reviews. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna finish up back in the football paradise. I'm gonna give you some close-ups and all the info you need to know. Let's go. So then guys, what did I pay for all three of these shirts? So as I mentioned, they all came from Mau Mau Jin on DH Gate. This one right here, this Barcelona 96, 97 one, individually would have cost me 13 pounds and 48 pence together with the psg one over there that was 13 pounds and 48 pence for some reason even though they all came off the same seller the two retro ones came together as a package which combined the shipping at eight pounds 69 i got a two pound 50 discount that wasn't necessarily exclusive to me if you've got the app on dh gate there's always discounts knocking around so for the psg and the Barca one combined, I paid a whopping 33 pounds and 14 pence. For me, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. For just over 13 pounds a shirt plus delivery, you wouldn't be able to get an authentic one anywhere close to that sort of money. Onto this one right here, again, from the same seller. This one was 14 pounds and nine pence, plus shipping of two pounds 27. I had an 83p discount. Again, there's always little discounts knocking around. They're not gonna be major. But again, you're buying the shirt at a really good price. So in total, this one cost me 15 pounds and 52 pence. So 15.52 for Jude. So to finish up this video, can I just say as a disclaimer, I've got both real and fake shirts in the football paradise. For example, this one right here came from, came from classic football shirts in Manchester from the shop. I know they're moving to a bigger shop soon. So I'm not trying to say you need to buy fake shirts over real ones, but obviously in this day and age, cost of living and all that, everyone's budget's different and everyone's goals are different. Some people like, like collecting authentic, real football shirts. Some just like me want to wear something to knock about in, make some cheesy YouTube videos like this, and it serves all purposes. So if you enjoyed this video again, stick the thumbs up. We'll do more shirt reviews to come. Check out my other videos as recently I've done uh, stadium tours i went to anfield i went to goodison and i went to a man united versus brentford game the other week did a match day vlog as well so lots of cool content coming to the football paradise subscribe if you're new and i'll see you very very soon